Good morning, everyone. Bienvenue à tous. Bonjour. Catherine, thank you so much for that introduction. Je suis vraiment très heureuse de vous souhaiter la bienvenue au Congrès annuel et salon professionnel de la FCM. I'm so happy that you've joined us here in Toronto, not far from where I grew up in Scarborough. And if you know anyone from Scarborough, we always make that distinction. Uh, and I hope you'll all take full advantage of the great workshops, the plenary sessions, the study tours we have planned for you, in addition to our annual trade show. We'll have federal leaders like Prime Minister Trudeau, Melissa Lansman, Jagmeet Singh, and Elizabeth May joining us. And you'll also be hearing from our incoming president, Scott Pierce, as well. Normalement, notre présidente sortante, Tanine Rudick, vous adresserait la parole, mais comme plusieurs d'entre vous le savent, elle est présentement occupée par sa candidature aux élections provinciales en Alberta. J'aurai le temps plus tard d'exprimer plus officiellement toute ma gratitude à Tanine. Je voudrais aussi remercier Scott d'avoir accepté la présidence aussi rapidement. C'est lui qui accueillera euh, très bientôt le premier ministre et pendant le week-end du congrès annuel, il vous parlera de sa vision d'avenir. Merci, Scott. That's true. Before I continue, I also want to acknowledge the ongoing wildfires across Alberta and the Northwest Territories. Too many of our members are deeply impacted by these wildfires as they've ripped through their communities, and our hearts go out to everyone affected. Now, normally I'll tell you I'm, I'm somehow not nervous for these moments. I love having the chance to get to speak with all of you, but today is a little bit different because the first time uh, in my 13 years at FCM, uh, some of my family could be here to see me in action. And so I want to acknowledge that my beautiful mother Carmen and my brother Eddie are in the crowd here this morning as well. <laughs> You know, um, my family immigrated to Canada in 1982 when I was just a baby. And my parents chose Canada as the place to raise their young family, start a small business, and build a new life. And we're one of millions of families who have come to Canada to find peace and prosperity, all while enriching the fabric of this country. And with new federal targets, we're now set to see significant increases to levels of immigration over the next few years. And from where I stand, that is a profoundly good and necessary thing. New, <laughs> new Canadians bring their skills and ideas that promote innovation, grow our economy, and strengthen our communities in countless ways. And we're a huge country, and as many of you are acutely feeling, we already have labor shortages across sectors. And not only that, but for the first time in centuries, the global population is set to decline. And while that might be good for the planet, countries like ours also need to find generational balance if we're going to succeed. Canada has an aging population, and more young people are opting to have fewer or no children. And of course, we're not alone. Most OECD countries are experiencing the same, facing depopulation unless they look to increasing immigration. And so in earnest, the global competition to attract young people and our future workforce is on. Because the simple fact is that our economies depend on it. Economic growth is tied directly to population growth, and growth is a good thing. Progress is a good thing. Welcoming more people to this incredible country is a good thing. But let me be frank with you. Canada is currently unprepared for it. The challenge isn't with the goal itself, it's with our lack of preparedness. And I need to be clear on this one central point. We will meet our national growth objectives, or not, through towns and cities, through municipalities through those on the front lines whose job it is to deliver shelter, infrastructure, programming, and services to millions of people every single day. And take a look at the issues plaguing our country. We're emerging from a pandemic that has left our healthcare systems severely hollowed out. The housing crisis is critical. Mental illness and addiction support is too hard to come by. And the cost of living is pushing people to the brink, not only in our biggest cities, but everywhere. 
And underscoring these challenges are issues that will require a massive overhaul of attitudes, processes, and systems, things like moving fast to address climate change and making real progress on reconciliation with Indigenous peoples. We need to build strong and resilient communities that benefit everyone, whether you're new to Canada or have lived here for generations. So how? How do we deliver on our promises to Canadians, achieve our necessary growth goals, and set up our communities for long-term success? Well, at its core, this is an exercise in strategic planning. We know the problems we need to solve, we know where we want to be, and so what we need now is a better way to get there. And from where we're all standing, it's clear that a major roadblock hindering that better way is an inadequate and outdated dynamic between orders of government in this country. <clears throat> it took a global health crisis to make it painfully obvious to everyone that the status quo just does not work. All of a sudden, local governments were thrown onto the front lines of public health, housing and emergency support, and we saw just how vulnerable, stretched and fragile we are. And we also saw your resilience. But municipalities should not be expected to pull off the impossible time and time again. It's not fair to the people in this room, and it's not fair to the Canadians you all serve. And that is why we need a new municipal growth framework. And to be very clear, that means a revenue tool that grows with the economy and redefining the way we engage across orders of government. And I promise you, this is a top priority for FCM until we get it done for a very simple reason. It is foundational to every big thing we are trying to do right now as a country. If we don't fix the way we work together across governments, I assure you that Canada will not achieve its goals when it comes to housing, infrastructure, mental health, climate action, the list goes on. We need to enable and empower our towns and our cities, not down the road, not a few years from now, but today, with all orders of government doing what Canadians expect us to do, working together to figure it out. Now, you know better than me that some will say that including municipalities in the conversation isn't possible. Some even take it a step further and argue that it doesn't work within the parameters of the Constitution. But let me say definitively, there is nothing unconstitutional about talking to each other directly across orders of government about how to fix things. <laughs> Absolutely nothing would break if federal and provincial meetings included local governments where it made sense. And, there are many constitutionally sound options for how to give municipalities a revenue tool that grows with the economy. Mm -hmm. It is a political choice not to go there, and it is a bad one, bad for effectiveness, bad for outcomes, and bad for Canadians. It is simply easier to put up barriers and make jurisdictional excuses rather than do the hard work of modern nation building. It's easier to point the finger at local government rather than come together to solve the problem. It's easier to look to municipalities to get the provinces and territories to the table when we have the smallest amount of leverage and resources rather than lead the conversation and get everyone in the same room. So I know I'm preaching to the choir here, folks, but honestly, we cannot afford as a country to be satisfied with the status quo. And the thing about local government, as all of you know well, is that you don't have the luxury of taking the easy way out. Because the Canadians desperate for help are in your towns and on your streets. And that is why having local leaders at the table doesn't muddy the waters, quite the opposite. Having leaders like you engaged from the outset gives everyone a clear-eyed reality check on what is needed and what is possible. Different orders of government working together to think beyond the status quo 
can be done, and it has been done to some success. Let me repeat that, we've already proven that it is possible. Look no further than the Canada Community Building Fund, formerly known as the Gas Tax Fund. When this direct federal to municipal transfer was doubled during COVID, it was remarkably impactful. Or consider the Rapid Housing Initiative, which provided urgent housing supports for thousands of vulnerable people during the pandemic. First time ever there was a, federal, a direct federal municipal program in this space. And make no mistake, we've been innovating since long before COVID. For over two decades, the Green Municipal Fund has provided a direct flow of federal dollars to towns and cities to finance projects to help our communities mitigate the impacts of climate change. And on this, I want to acknowledge that after securing a, fi a new $530 million commitment from the federal government for GMF, for which we are very grateful, FCM is excited to expand our work to new climate adaptation programming in your communities. And I have to say, our innovation needn't be between just two orders of government. We've shown that all three orders, federal, municipal, and yes, provincial and territorial, can and must work together to deliver good outcomes for Canadians. We've also done this in interesting ways before, through urban development and tripartite agreements. Now, they weren't perfect, and there are certainly lessons to be learned from them, but it would be a mistake to not treat them as models that we can build on. And so while I've pointed to some successes, here's the thing to remember. Local governments have had to innovate around our existing systems far too often. From coast to coast to coast, you've accomplished great things despite the status quo, not because of it. And so it's time for us as a country to think bigger. A new growth framework that gives municipalities the tools they need and includes you in the planning from day one. Any other approach won't cut it. Because as I said at the outset, whether or not we meet our national objectives hinges on how we enable and empower municipalities. <clears throat> And you know what, from big cities to small towns, you are already leading this work. With the right tools, we can innovate and create the conditions that will help Canadians thrive for generations. I know this because I know that you are innovators at heart. If you want to see leadership, look at what Toronto just accomplished on housing, putting an end to single-family-only exclusionary zoning across the city. Check out Selkirk, Manitoba, a community of over just 10,000 that's knocking it out of the park when it comes to accessibility and reconnecting residents to the core. The city of St. Albert, great things on housing. Last fall, they approved a transfer of city-owned land downtown for a new residential and commercial development with at least 55% of the units being provided at below market rates. Au Québec, la Ville de Laval a investi plus de 20 millions de dollars dans le cadre d'un partenariat fédéral, provincial, municipal, afin de revitaliser le quartier Val-Martin, notamment en y construisant 235 nouveaux logements et un centre communautaire et en rénovant 124 logements existants. In Rosslyn, BC, their new city hall includes affordable spaces, community spaces, affordable housing on site, and it's almost finished construction thanks to an incredible team effort by the city of Rosslyn, BC Housing, Columbia Basin Trust, FCM's Green Municipal Fund, and the federal government. In Charlottetown, PEI, they've been building back from Hurricane Fiona with resilient forest canopies and an innovative tree co-ownership model with homeowners. And just last week, the Washington Post recognized Calgary as a leader in revitalizing their downtown core by transforming empty offices into homes for locals and creating more community gathering spaces. Mes amis, voilà le gouvernement municipal à son meilleur. Je suis toujours inspiré par le travail de nos membres. Vous rêvez grand et vous réalisez vos rêves. Vous avez les idées et les ambitions, mais vous avez besoin de soutien afin de concrétiser des progrès durables pour vos collectivités. Nous avons réussi de belles avancées avec nos partenaires fédérales, particulièrement au cours des de dernières années, mais il reste euh, encore beaucoup de chemin à faire. And so our offer is for our federal and provincial and territorial colleagues to join us. 
partner with us to do this essential work. Let's build a new approach because we can do big things in this country. So let's do this really important, really big thing together. I'm ready, I know you're ready. Let's get to work for Canada, for Canadians, and for our future. Thank you very much.